Welcome to Aquatic Inertia and thanks for watching. In this video we will be discussing all the different types of filter media and how to use them properly. This is a very popular topic among fish keepers and you can't blame us just due to how many different brands, functions, and variations that exist. There is no end to the variety and options. And to top it off, we all have different views on what is best and worst types of media. Well, hopefully we can shed some light on how certain filter media is designed to function that may seem obvious, but many times are used incorrectly. And when I say used incorrectly, it does not mean that the media will not work. What I really am trying to say that it is just not optimized to get the maximum filtration possible out of that particular media. And I will offer up my own opinions on how I like to set things up and use filter media. And it's my hope that we both learn from this video. So please, if you have different experiences or opinions on anything in this video, leave a comment below for us to discuss. It is no wonder sometimes media is not optimized because a lot of times filter manufacturers do not advise people of the proper order that the water should flow through the filter media. It should go coarse mechanical, medium mechanical, fine mechanical, followed by basic chemical, specific chemical, and last it should go through the biological media. Let's take that concept one step at a time. Coarse mechanical filtration should always go before medium and fine mechanical. If the fine is first, it just gets clogged up faster and it doesn't leave much for the coarse to collect, making it a lot less efficient. Now on top of that fine filter, you could put what's called a water polisher pad. Now those can be 100 microns or 50 microns, and that'll really get the water sparkling clear. PPI is pores per inch. So an open-celled sponge may have 10 large pores or openings every inch. Something with a lot smaller pores per inch, such as a 45 PPI sponge, is going to trap a lot smaller particles. I would define a coarse mechanical filter as a sponge having a PPI of 10 a medium of 30 ppi and a fine of 40 ppi. When it comes to microns, that is where you get into water polisher pads. The smallest particle the human eye can see is about 50 microns. This is about the diameter, diameter of a human hair. Now basic chemical filtration is just carbon and that should be used before any other specific chemical media. I'm referring to products like Purigen, GFO, or other specific chemical medias. You want it in this order because the carbon will perform its job by collecting tannins and odor producing particles, leaving only the specific particles for the specific media to handle. This way it is only used up on what it is made for, nothing else. Both the carbon and the specific chemical filtration will be used efficiently that way. And finally, the cleanest possible water is left to go through the biological media. This way the beneficial bacteria only deal with the cleanest water and do not have to deal with anything other than the ammonia, nitrites, and nitrates. This makes perfect sense, right? Then why do almost all canister filters instruct to put the fine mechanical or the water polisher filters at the last stage in the filtration process? My theory is they want it on top. So, number one, it's easier to change out because usually the last stage is at the top of the canister. And two, related to the reason number one, they want you to buy a replacement filter. So they make it the easiest filter to access and that dirty filter is the first thing you see when you crack open that canister. It may seem to make sense to say, well, let's get it clean right before dumping the water back into the tank. But the same thing happens by putting it before the chemical and bio biological sections. 
and you get the benefit of the particles not clogging up all the pores, cracks, and valleys, blocking the oxygen and the food from getting to the bacteria. Putting the fine mechanical media or the water polisher pads after the chemical and biomedia creates no benefit to the system, but there is a significant cost in efficiency. Now, do you need all these stages in every filter? No. And in certain situations, all that is needed is a, is a coarse mechanical media and biological media. But I wanted to cover all of them in this video. You also hear people say you don't even need biological media because there is already so much surface area on the mechanical media for bacteria to grow on. But think about the mechanical media trapping all the waste and clogging up the paths to the bacteria. When that happens, the bacteria will grow on the waste. When the waste is removed, a lot of the bacteria gets removed with it. Now, I know people love simple air-powered sponge filters, and I do too. And if I had a bunch of tanks, I would use them in every one of them because they're so easy to use, maintain, and operate. Now, one thing you can do is have two sponge filters going at the same time. So you clean one and leave the other one untouched. So you might be losing the beneficial bacteria on one of them, but the other one remains pristine to clean up all the ammonia, nitrates, and maybe even some of the nitrates. In general, all filters need to be cleaned or in the case of most filter polisher pads, replaced about once per month. Materials for mechanical filters are filter pads, foam blocks, filter floss, and polishing pads. Filter pads are the small sliding cartridges found in most hang-on-the-back filters. Foam blocks are also in hang-on-back and canister filters. Fairly firm with large pores and should last a long time. Filter floss is common too in both types of filters. It can be used as a type of water polishing pad. Polyester pillow stuffing works great as filter floss. As long as there are no additives like anti-mold or mildew chemicals, they will be, you're good to go. The other chemical media types are things like Seachem, Purigen, Polyfilter, Granular Ferric Oxide, Crushed Coral, Peat, Peat Granules, ammonia chips, nitrate absorbing media, and there's probably more I did not mention here. Fresh coral is not a chemical media, but it certainly will change the water chemistry in your aquarium. It does this by raising the pH and KH. This may be needed for certain fish. So if you have a middle to low pH, this crushed coral can raise that pH up and make certain types of fish like African cichlids, they will really enjoy a higher pH because that's what they're used to. And now on to biomedia. Biomedia is home to nitrifying bacteria. That's it. That's all it does. They provide a nice comfy home for them to reside in. Porous ceramic media that has access to a steady flow of clean oxygenated water provided by a pump is an ideal submerged biomedia. Surface area per volume is king when it comes to biomedia. While it's true bacteria will grow on anything, they do not thrive just anywhere. They will thrive and reproduce quickly as the bio load in the tank increases when they are in an ideal location. The ideal location has plenty of food oxygen and free surface area that is not clogged up with debris and waste. And where in the aquarium is that? It's not on the glass or the gravel. It's in the filter where we've created a nice home for them to live. Other areas in the tank do not have the flow like the filter does. Those areas will not house significant colonies of bacteria that can reproduce quickly. Now, I have two favorites. I like Seachem Matrix and Biohome. They are by far my favorites, but I'm interested to know what your favorites are. So please list your favorites in the comment section below. Pot scrubbers. They're pretty popular, 
and they're cheap. And I use them from time to time. But there's really no good proof on how well they work. And so investing in a good biomedia can go a long way and help your aquarium thrive. Bioballs are specifically designed for use in trickle filters where their lack of surface area is more than compensated for by the massive amount of oxygen in the air which allows the fewer bacteria to be much more productive. They really don't belong in the canister or a HOB filter. Will they work? Yes. Are they the, are they the best choice? No. They just weren't designed for that type of filter. K2 Biological Media a self-cleaning filtration method. It's a floating plastic media. It started being used in waste management and fish farms. You partially fill a container with this media and then circulate it with air. It will tumble, which helps it rid itself of waste and dead bacteria, keeping the media clean. The aeration is great. This is used a lot in custom design sun filters. I think this is one of the best media and filter combinations in existence. There are claims though that because you have to use less media it is not as effective. But the argument against this claim is that it self cleanses using more active area than other biomedia and it has superior water flow which brings the bacteria a ton of oxygen and food which more than compensates for using less of it. If you do need to replace old biomedia for newer, hopefully better media, then it's best to do it gradually, then all at once. Media base can make this a lot simpler. This will help to prevent throwing off the balance of your tank by slowly changing it out. Well, I hope this helped to understand the media types available and the best order to put them in, and maybe see that it is worth spending a little more money on more effective types of media. And from time to time, you will find me throwing in, a car in carbon in a less ideal position just because it is easier and convenient to do so. But if you have any questions or other thoughts and ideas on filter media, please leave a comment below. And if you like this sort of video, please like and support the station by subscribing. Thanks for watching Aquatic Inertia, as always, and bye for now.